Nine dollars. What? Nine dollars. The boys department. No. Look at the ass. Check out the ass. No. Look at that. When there is a budget surplus in the office, what ends up happening? Turns out a lot of economic forces are at play, which is what we're going to discover in this video. My name is Matt Rozu. I'm an economist at Susquehanna University. I'm joined by Dan Keister, who co-created the Economics of the Office website. Let's go to the clip now, and then we'll be back to discuss some of the economic lessons. You can see clearly on this page that we have a surplus of Forty-three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we have to spend that by the end of the day, or it will be deducted from next year's budget. Ooh. We should spend this money on a new copier, which we desperately need. Okay. With that money, I am going to buy a new drum roll, please. Can anybody guess? New chairs? No, a new copier. All right. Unless everybody can agree on something better. No, no, please, please do not do this. Yes, Michael, new chairs. These chairs are terrible. We were supposed to get new ones last year. Michael? Yes? I've talked to Meredith, Stanley, and Jim about the chairs. I know they're with me on this. Uh, actually, I'm going to go with a copier. What? Hmm? Jim. Thank you, Michael. Oh, thank you, guys. Oh, oh, oh. wow. <laughs> yeah. Michael? Yeah. Hey. hey! You got a second? I do. Oh, good. Oh, oh, that must have been so fun. It was fun. We had a good time. Hey, have I told you you look really nice today? Oh, thank you. Yeah, is that a new tie? Um, no. Not, no, no, I got it at TJ Maxx, $4. That is amazing! You think that's good? Check out these pants. Nine dollars. What? Nine dollars. The boys department. No. Look at the ass. Check out the ass. No Look at that. way. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, a little bit longer, but absolutely fantastic. So to to kind of summarize, uh, there's this budget surplus, uh, forty three hundred dollars, and you had two camps of people for how they wanted to spend the money. Some thought needed a new copier. Others thought everybody in the office just needs new office chairs. So what are we what are we learning here in this clip? Yeah, I mean, this is rent seeking behavior uh, at its finest, and it it kind of shows concerns about bloated government, I suppose, in many ways, and lobbying. You know, and those are two separate clips, right? The first clip is more. We can use that to talk about budget surplus, budget deficits, uh, and, you know, public choice theory a little bit, because there is that whole idea that Oscar explains to Michael, if you if you shrink your budget this year, you're never going to see it again. Yeah. And uh, so there, there's that kind of subtle implication of, of public choice theory and rent seeking behavior. But the second clip is all about, you know, lobbying, about... Uh, you know, Michael is is the uh, is the elected person or the powerful person who's really not a bad guy. He just assumes that everybody will love him and want to curry his favor because that's just the way the world should be. Uh, and his ego takes over, and he doesn't. It doesn't dawn on him that maybe no. people are, he, or he doesn't care maybe that people want to get something out of him. And so uh, there's a lot that, that we really like to show there. There's the hot chocolate offering of bribery. There's the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the kissing up to Michael and Michael always wanting to be in the middle of things. You know, he's spending all his time around the office. And uh, yeah, so there's, you know, there's no really right or wrong answer between the copier or the chairs. They, there's clearly a need for that, uh, those things to be updated. But um but that's kind of beside the point, yeah. I guess. Yeah, and, and take it a step back for those who may not know. So when we talk about rent seeking here, uh, <clears throat> generally in this context, it means there's some sort of a prize and people are putting forth actions that really have no efficient purpose for society. So, I mean, a common example is actually um, that I use when I teach is writing grants for 
prizes, government grants for prizes. The action of writing a grant takes time and effort away from other productive activities in order to win a prize. And that's actually a pretty common one <clears throat> that academics would know reasonably well because a lot of academics spend <clears throat> some spend really significant amounts of time on grant writing, but there's all sorts of other ways people could try to curry favor with, you know, your boss or elected official that has nothing to do with being more productive as a worker, which is, yeah, in this case, um, crazy examples. And, and the question that we use to bring home, you know, if I give a discussion question to a company, this, how productive are the people in the office being? How much paper are they selling? How, yep, you yep. know, how, how much are they building? They're doing nothing that helps the business whatsoever in any part of that clip, but they're all trying to curry favor of, in this case, the Michael's the decision maker. Yep, yep. Yeah, and then the, the very first part is interesting on the budgets. The idea that if um, somebody doesn't spend their full budget in a year, then it's cut the next year is a horrendously perverse incentive. Uh, Which we see in academics to some degree. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I think you see it in a lot of places and just really goes to the, you know, you talk about the law of unintended consequences. It's, you know, I mean, there's a good reason, right? You don't want people to spend more than they need to spend. So, okay, there's that idea there. So you, know, you had somebody in mind say, oh, if they didn't spend it this year, then yeah, next year I'll just give whatever they spent and they should be fine. But well, that gives the incentive to try to spend just a little bit more this particular year to fill out the budget. And um, <clears throat> yeah, really bad incentives. Thank you for watching and a big thanks to Dan Keister from Kansas State University for joining for that conversation. If you'd like to learn more economics in a fun way, I love making economics accessible, often using pop culture like with The Office or Curb Your Enthusiasm, Star Wars, Friends, yeah, you name it. Please subscribe and uh, would really appreciate it also if you'd like the video. And to everybody out there, we'll see you in the next video.